Hi besties, so my name is Mina, welcome to my channel Mina Reads, and welcome to another episode of the English Major Diaries. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Mina, I'm an English major, and these English Major Diary videos are just reading vlogs essentially, where I tell you about the stuff that I'm reading for school and the stuff that I'm reading for fun and all that good stuff. So today is August 29th, second week of the fall semester for me, so I thought this would be a good time to film just because we haven't gotten like too heavy into the work yet um so my workload shouldn't be crazy and i can spend some time you know going over like my course schedule with you guys and also telling you about the stuff that i read for fun so on my for fun tbr this week i have alone with you in the ether which i feel like you can't see but alone with you in the ether or slash and uh love in other words by christina lauren this has been on my TBR for quite some time. The last Christina Lauren book I read was Roomies and I really didn't like it. So I'm like praying and hoping against hope that this is the uh, the one that kind of redeems them in my eyes because I really want to love this. Let's get into the work week. I have some homework that I need to do before my class this afternoon. Also today I'm going to a concert so I have lots of things to get done before I can get ready for my concert which I'm so excited for. I'm seeing My Chemical Romance. Don't laugh at me, it's not funny, like I love them so much and they're finally reuniting, they're making new music, they're on tour, like this is a big deal for me. So I'm happy, I'm excited and hopefully this will be a fun week so stay tuned. Same day, finished all my classes. Today I had three classes. I have um, a text and criticism class. I have a class called Sacred Space and it's like a Greek and Roman society class. Uh, and it's just about like, particularly we're talking about Greeks right now. So we're talking about like Greek mythology and religious practices and stuff like that. Um, and the other class that I had was my gender studies class, but I'm finally home and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear to my concert. My concert's in like, two-ish hours um so i'm trying to find my outfit i'm i'm trying on this shirt it's just a t-shirt i'm gonna crop it and i have on this like really teeny tiny mini skirt like it's a bit too teeny tiny so i'm not gonna show it on camera but i am wearing that and i diy'd it from something i thrifted like last week um so we'll see maybe the outfit looks good maybe it doesn't i haven't decided yet but um, I am here to tell you that I did start reading something. I read some stuff for class, but none of it was like very interesting. So let's not talk about it. Instead, we're going to talk about The Dare by Harley Leroux, which is this uh, spicy erotic novella that everybody on TikTok was talking about last year. And I remember it having a lot of buzz because they banned it on Amazon. So, um, so I was like, well, if it's that freaky crazy, I have to see what it's all about. Um, and I do really like Harley Leroux. Uh, she wrote one of my favorite romance books perhaps of all time i love her soul for revenge so much like you don't understand the things that that book unlocked in me like obsessed with that book but i feel like i have yet to read another harley the road thing that evokes that same kind of emotion so i wanted to read the dare and i'm reading it i'm like 45 percent through the ebook and i don't i I don't love it. The Dare is basically about this girl named Jessica. She was like the popular girl in high school and she had this like high school nemesis named Manson who was like this nerdy goth kid that she had like an antas antagonistic like playfully flirty relationship um, and some stuff and things transpire that basically gets him expelled from the school um and so he ends up being at this party that she goes to a few years later while they're in college and uh they get into this like beer pong competition and then there's a dare where he dares her to like be his slave for the evening or whatever and so that's what's going on listen i think that you will enjoy this book if you enjoy the kinks that are in it but if you are not interested in the particular kinks that are in here there's nothing to the story that's particularly interesting. I
Hello, this angle is so crazy, but I just wanted to show you that I ended up changing my outfit and um, this is what I wore to the My Chemical Romance concert and I can't get too close to the camera because I definitely cried and ruined my makeup, but yeah, I had so much fun. It was so good. Hey besties, so in news that's shocking absolutely no one, um, I haven't read a single thing that I mentioned to you earlier in the video that was a part of the, the weekly TBR or whatever. Also, it's Saturday, so the last time I updated you was Monday, so we hate that for me. Um, I'm going to be vlogging for who knows how long. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, it's Saturday. I'm currently running some errands with my mom, um, and she just ran in to go get her new glasses or something. So I'm in the car, and I decided to finally update you on what I have been reading, which is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair, I want to say is that her name yeah um so i am 117 pages 119 pages into this book and this is a vampire fantasy romance it's about this character named isolde and she is the princess of this country called lara or this territory called lara and lara is endangered by this vampire warlord named adrian something the blood king um and so basically what happens is that her father is in peace talks with adrian and adrian says like i want to marry your daughter um if we want to have peace between our lands and so Adrian and Isolde get married this is like an enemies to lovers vibe except he really does not see her as an enemy like he likes her he's just trying to be married and do cute couple shit and she really hates him and like she's trying to kill him and personally I am absolutely eating it up I can't say that the writing is like absolutely amazing stunning spectacular or anything you know super new and exciting and very simplistic straight to the point lots of sexy times are happening and i am a fan of them i have to say i really like the fact that our character isolde is like not a virgin i feel like a lot of fantasy romances deal with like virgin characters or it's their first time they're really inexperienced and so it always has to be the dude who's like teaching her how to be intimate and i hate i i hate that i think that's not my favorite thing to read about so i'm glad that isolde is kind of she's been out here in the streets we love to see that for her um and i just like them i think that she's so funny because she's very like belligerently horny about him but also she hates him and it's just funny their interactions are so amusing and i'm having a good time and i just started it this morning um and like i said i'm already a hundred something pages into it and it's like a 400 ish page book so we'll see how much more progress i make today because like i said i am running errands with my mom and we are also going to pick up my grandma for lunch so lunch is going to be happening so i don't know when i'm going to get back to reading but we'll see so some time has passed it's been a day or so and i have completed king of battle and blood and unfortunately it really 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 took a turn for the worse for me personally so like i said this was kind of like this enemies to lovers arranged marriage type deal and um it was interesting in the beginning because it was it was like very immediately spicy which i thought was interesting even though she had these like complex feelings about him and his role in like supposedly subjugating her kingdom and stuff like that and it was really interesting because her love interest adrian is like honestly he just seems like completely in love with her from the very beginning and he's like not trying to cause her no problems he's very like yes ma'am whatever you want whatever you need and she's the one who like really hates him which is you know cool and fine very valid um but i really don't feel like their relationship grows beyond that i feel like they have this sexual relationship and then she's very hot and cold with him so she blames him for pretty much everything that has ever gone wrong in her life she can stub her toe and it's his fault and like i i get her being angry especially based on like you know the backstory of the situation like the political backdrop that the story is you know set up in i understand her being angry with him but it just felt so annoying because i felt like they they as characters in their relationship never really moved past or we didn't get to see like lots of on-page development of them getting to a place where like they really like each other so when there's like you know lots of emotional reveals and stuff and it's like oh we love each other it just doesn't make any fucking sense like i i know that she loves banging him no, she loves riding him into the sunset but that don't mean that they're in love or that it makes sense that they're in love um and i also think that just like the plot stuff in this is so weakly done and so uninteresting and like i don't understand how this author managed to have like 
sexy vampires and smut and murder and make it boring but it's so boring and like when i tell you that they're killing people all the time like every five seconds they turn around and they're stabbing somebody in the middle of court and i understand that some of the people that they kill are like you know political adversaries or whatever but even that i don't think that the world building and the political machinations of the world make enough sense that it really like resonates when they kill somebody so it just seems like they're constantly like stabbing random people and you don't really know who the fuck these people are or what their roles were or what the ramifications of them now being dead are going to be so it just feels like why did you stab that person like and what is going to be the the possible consequences and or benefits of those people being dead like it just never makes any sense so it feels like they were killed just to be edgy or to make the main character is old because she kills a lot of people like to make her seem like really cool and badass and i mean she did seem cool and badass and she could find it and whatever so good for her but it just it just didn't resonate like it didn't feel like it made sense or it was aiding the characters and getting towards some kind of goal or anything so it just what is the point what are we doing here like it just i don't know it just got so boring and i just think that like the vibes in the beginning that for the first like hundred or so pages the vibes were really carrying it and they were really the biggest reason that i was enjoying it so much but vibes were not enough to get me through 400 pages of pretty much bullshit i just feel like there was not enough depth or detail to make this like a really interesting narrative so i can't even i can't even begin to imagine or give a fuck about what they're going to be doing in a second book so i definitely won't be continuing this series i'm not going to say that it's like atrociously bad but i just think that as my reading experience went on i just was so bored and i just wanted so much more from it than what it actually ended up being so yeah this was a really long update but and the update is about to get much fucking longer because i've started another book and i am reading the princess trap by talia hibbert and i am about 25 percent into it i might even be a little bit more than that because i've been listening to the audiobook um this morning while i clean my room and stuff but the princess trap is basically about these two characters cherry and reuben uh reuben he is like this prince of a small scandinavian country and cherry she, she works like in the hr department at this prestigious academy and they meet one day because he's planning or he was thinking about maybe um donating some funds to their institution and he happens to see her while he's in a meeting he asks her to lunch they kind of go out um but they get caught kissing in public and now sh her name is like all through the press and Ruben lied to basically say that she's his fiance and so you know like they need their privacy and to leave them alone but now the lie is spiraling and so she has to go back to this small fictional Scandinavian country with him so that they can play at being you know happily in love fiancés potentially getting married i am having so much fun with it i think cherry is a really fun character Ruben, i really like him i think that he is like an interestingly flawed person because he's very arrogant and his arrogance gets him into all of these like stupid situations and i think that it's so interesting how down bad he is for cherry like he likes her so much and cherry kind of likes him but she's just so fucking irritated with him for honestly blowing up her life in a really big way um and he just did it so casually so i really am liking the way that there's like there's a lot of tension here because ruben very clearly did something like fucked up by having this secret identity and not making everything super plain to her when he initially asked her out on a date but at the same time there's still like this romantic and sexual tension between them while they're trying to do this whole like fake engaged fake married thing um and it's just very entertaining talia hibbert is always funny her stuff is always sexy and i they have had like a few like interrupted sex scenes or like interrupted kiss scenes where they're like making out and then something happens but even those scenes woo amazing incredible iconic so i'm having a really good time
Like you know how to whistle. Don't you see? Okay. Hi. I just got back from class, and I have my British Romanticism class today. Um, we talked about Wordsworth and Coleridge. Boring. I hate British Romanticism. I hate Romanticism. Period. I hate poetry. Not my favorite things to study, but you know we're trying to get this degree it's a degree requirement so i'm taking it i hate it it is what it is moving on to the fun stuff good fun exciting things right so we all know that i was reading the princess trap i'm still reading that i'm like 70 percent into it i listened to a little bit more of the audiobook on my commute to campus but while i was on the bus i just was like on instagram and um earlier in this vlog i was reading the dare and so y'all know i i like harley larroe harley larroe's cool i was on her instagram today and i was scrolling and she has like a uh, fan art or maybe not fan art but just like artistic uh representations of what her characters are supposed to look like and i was looking at one of the pictures and the picture for manson like the guy in the dare so this is this is his picture this is what he looks like right this is the artwork this is Andy Beersack from Black Bell Rides. Like, this is him. Um, and I'm, I'm not mad at it. I think that Andy is so fucking fine. So you know what? It's reinvigorated my desire to finish the dare. So I'm going to finish the dare today. And then I will go back to reading uh, The Princess Trap. It's been a few hours. Uh, I did some homework. I took a nap. And I finished the dare. I don't think I'm gonna give this a star rating. I definitely think that I enjoyed reading it today a lot more than I enjoyed reading it last week when I was trying it. And I think that that's because the beginning portion of like the whole story takes place at a party, but the beginning portion, like maybe the first forty percent, is like very very public. Like they're in the middle of a party, like doing all of this stuff, and like the public humiliation aspect was so like it's a personal ick for me but after that first 40 percent they start doing a bunch of stuff like privately in secluded rooms of the party and then it's a lot more fun and entertaining in my personal view um there are a lot of reviews of this book that are like talking about the um like the clown scene honestly in like a really negative way specifically on goodreads i've seen so many reviews about the clowns and like oh my god what the fuck was going on like i'm sorry to say but the clown scene was the best scene in the whole book the clowns made the book the clowns they were they were the book to me like they they slayed you know what i'm saying like the clown scene was the best scene in the whole book sorry to say so i will definitely be reading the follow-up like full-length romance and i believe that that one is supposed to be polly so it's going to be about jessica manson and the clown guys vincent lucas and whatever the other guy's name is jason it's going to be about them and it's going to be polly so th that sounds interesting i'm definitely going to be tuned in hello i am running late i need to get to campus uh so i'm about to leave in one second but i did want to update you guys on the fact that oh i have my headphones in still um i wanted to update you guys on the fact that i just finished uh the princess trap and uh, i feel like i want to give it like three stars maybe like 3.5 stars i think that this book was it had you know talia's like trademark humor i think the characters had good banter together i think they had good chemistry but i didn't really love something about like the flow of the story i felt like the pacing was a little bit off and i think the beginning like maybe the first 40 ish percent was flowing really well it was like going pretty good for me and i was having a lot of fun but um once once cherry finds out that reuben is a prince and um that they're doing this whole like fake marriage fake fiance thing um they move into reuben's house and after they move into reuben's house i feel like the story really stagnates and i know that that period of time was supposed to be for like a lot of emotional romantic development and also they do lots of spicy times at his house and i feel like you know that's cool but i don't think that i feel like it just kind of stalled the momentum a little bit and i don't think that there was enough emotional development had there i don't think they had enough like serious conversations that made me feel like okay like they're really getting to know each other and they like each other on this really deep level like i just don't think that that period of time was used to like particular effect and then you know a lot of plot stuff starts happening in the maybe like the last 25 percent of the book um and it just was very dramatic and fraud and 
not even necessarily between um cherry and reuben i mean they have like a little bit of beef which was kind of stupid but um it's more like external plot and i don't feel like that external plot was like it wasn't done super well i think it made sense but i didn't think that it was done super well so i we started off really really strong with this one but i feel like near the end i just felt a bit more like hmm about it so still love talia i think it was a good fun book i would say that if you're looking for like a, a rom-com if you enjoy like the fake dating fake marriage you know like arranged marriage type trope or if you like modern royals like those kind of romances i think that this is a book that you could check out um i will also probably say don't listen to the audiobook because the audiobook narrator like i like his voice but also the way that he narrates like the sexy scenes is so odd and uncomfortable so don't listen to the audiobook i think that may have also played a role in why i didn't love the section when they were just at ruben's house like doing the do because the audiobook narrator he kind of was doing the most uh and not in a good way so yeah those are my final thoughts on that uh and i am still planning to read love and other love and other words in this video but along with you in the ether is unfortunately on the chopping block i'm not reading that in this video but i will be reading love in other words i'm in a you know romancing mood and so hopefully this one will be like the hit that i really need i don't want to put too much pressure on the reading experience but i want it to be good i want it to be good so bad hi friends so i'm in bed obviously so we've got this lovely angle going right now but love in other words is about this character named macy and um her childhood best friend slash maybe first love elliot um and so this is kind of a dual timeline narrative where we're seeing them as children well as teenagers um she meets him and he like lives next door to her vacation home or something like that um and so they bond as teens of uh, over their like shared love of books and words and stuff like that and so they they have a very little nerdy romance brewing in their teen years and in the present day uh macy has not seen elliot for about 10 or 11 years but she sees him at a coffee shop and they have this kind of i don't want to say a confrontation like but it's the kind of like seems like an emotionally negative uh situation for macy like she sees she seems really effed up over it and the thing that gagged me the thing that really has me shook is that macy has a fiance i think or maybe like a really serious boyfriend that she's planning to get married to and so basically after having seen elliot like in a coffee shop and they had that little run-in um her boyfriend slash fiance later on in the day night tries to initiate sexy times with her and she's thinking in her head she's like i i can't i can't do this with him right now because i can't run the risk of it not feeling right after having seen elliot like elliot's power bro literally they just saw each other in a coffee shop imagine seeing somebody in a coffee shop and that changes like the whole relational dynamic between you and your fiance like elliot's power it can't be understated like first 50 pages are going very good but i feel like i had that same experience with like every book that i read in this video so far i started and i'm like oh my god i'm loving it i'm eating it up it's so good and then my next update is me being like yes yeah, so i finished and i didn't like it so fingers crossed that i'm not jinxing it but i think that this one it could hit as long as they don't do nothing too stupid it could hit um good morning friends i'm about to go to campus soon but i have to update you on love and other words i'm now about a hundred and i want to say 70 maybe 180 pages into the book and i'm still loving it y'all like it is so incredibly good i think it's good on so many different levels i just think the writing is really good um it's flowing really easily um, i'm also listening to the audiobook um you know like in tandem and i think the audiobook narrator does a really good job um and i just am really loving this character exploration of macy and i think that macy's a really interesting character because she is someone who I feel like we're we're slowly getting to know more and more about her and more about her like internal emotional process and I feel like finding out about that kind of stuff is so interesting and basically where I'm at at this moment her and Elliot have reconnected after 11 years apart and um you know the fire and the passion is still there and Elliot kind of wanted them to be together uh it seems like near the end of their friendship in their teen years they did 
begin to start dating and something happened that ended that um and so it kind of seems like you know something happened that ended that um romantic aspect of their relationship and they never saw each other again but when she sees elliot it's really bringing up all these past emotions and i love that we're getting to see you know them in the past them as teens building their initial connection as well as now and like that sense of of history of closeness and they just feel like soulmates like they feel like characters that i just know that they should be together like they just belong together and i love when an author can like recreate that feeling and make it feel like these are soulmates like they belong together and you're really invested in them being together um, but one of the roadblocks in terms of them getting together is the fact that macy has a fiance at the moment she's like dating this guy but the circumstances seem a little bit odd because she's been dating the guy for like two months and already she's like living with him and his daughter and they were talking about maybe getting married so honestly especially if she's having doubts right now and thinking about elliot like girl if you don't leave that man and his baby like sorry to sorry to sean and uh phoebe but girl you know like make it make some sense so yeah that's about where i'm at so far i already know and hopefully i'll be able to finish this today um because it's so good and i want to know if it's going to finish strong or not but i i almost forgot to tell you one of my favorite aspects of this i haven't really been tabbing i only have like two tabs but one of them is like this really romantic line between macy and elliot but i have this purple tab in here which is for macy's mother and basically macy's mother had passed away when macy was a really young girl and so a lot of a lot of her relationship with elliot in the beginning is like springing from the pain of her mother having passed away because her father like buys them this like vacation home or whatever and that vacation home is the thing that ends up connecting her with elliot um and they that vacation home is like the the place where they build their connection and their relationship to each other but also you know the fact that she feels so lonely and so isolated and she's missing her mother so much um elliot becomes this really safe person that she feels that she could be very open and vulnerable with um and so he becomes one of the most important connections in her life and so when we do get these moments of you know just like memories about her mom and stuff like that it's really beautiful and there was this letter that her mom wrote to her where her mom says um her mom says i made you diligently months i slaved over you and you are my masterpiece i miss you and i love you so much because the mother had cancer so she was like writing these like letters making all these plans so that she could kind of be there for macy while macy was growing up well obviously not being able to be there physically and it's just so emotional and so good and i'm i'm having a good time Hopefully the times stay good because y'all know me. I am so likely to love a book at the beginning and hate it after. But I, I need this to be a good one. And it's already kind of serving. So we'll see. You, you, you know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. today is saturday and after going on a walk with my mom uh i decided to wash my hair so i just finished like trimming it and i need to figure out what i'm gonna do with it for the next week um but i also ended up finishing up love in other words and i have to say that some of my fears did come true i didn't end up loving like the second half or maybe more like the last quarter or so of the book um just because i felt like the pacing was a little bit off for me with this book uh just because it is one of those dual timeline stories where we are having the past timeline lead up to some big incident and then the present timeline which is in the fallout of that incident um and about like these characters emotionally reconnecting after the incident but you know it takes us a really long time like basically up to the very last chapter or so um to find out what really occurred uh that 
drove them apart and i just felt like i wanted more time for resolution um but we pretty much get like the big reveal and then the book is over and i really wanted like so much more than what we got there and i just left the reading experience feeling a little bit like i don't want to say i felt cheated or anything like that but i just wanted more i wanted more i wanted more resolution i wanted to see more of the characters and their relationship when they're in like a a even slightly stable place like in the present timeline because in the present they're like not together at all you know like it's not even like a regular romance where sometimes you know they have like a moment where they're together before like the big dramatic moment where they break up in the third act or something like it's not even like that so i just feel like i wanted to know more about what their relationship would look like as adults because we don't get to see any of that because there's a bunch of obstacles in the way of their adult relationship and while their childhood friendship slash relationship was really cute and it did convince me that they are in love and that they are soulmates and everything like that and that they are soulmates and stuff i still wanted to see more of their adult relationship so i am sad that it kind of ends super duper abruptly but it was still a good book um i definitely would recommend it i think it's my favorite that i read this week um so yeah like it was a good one and i'm pretty much finishing up the vlog on this note so thank you so much for reading with me this week i had a good week diving back into romance i'm hoping that this will get me back into a romance groove just in general because i haven't been reading as much romance over like this summer and i just feel like i want to get back to my romance roots uh so this was the the first step in getting me there so let me know if you've read any really good romances recently that you could recommend me in the comments below i'd love to hear about them and thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you all in my next one bye you guys like comment and subscribe and a special thank you to all of my wonderful wonderful patrons Mwah.